All right. All right, I'm here with uh, writer, director, editor, Dave Boyle, and star, co-writer, uh, musician, Don Nakamura of Daylight Savings. We met last year here at the South by Southwest Film Festival, where your film is having its world premiere. Uh, again, <laughs> your previous <laughs> film, uh, Sergey Valentine, premiered here last year, and we met at the same time. You, or maybe not you, but somebody has billed this <laughs> as uh, somewhat of a sequel yeah. to that movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, how would you characterize that in terms of, uh, is, is it, do you have to have seen Sergey Valentine to appreciate it? No, it, it works as a standalone, but if, if you see Surrey of Valentine, there's definitely a lot um, more of a, uh, there's a richer background to it, if, if you've seen it. I, but we've had plenty of people see Daylight Savings first, and then see Surrey of Valentine, and it, right. it didn't seem to yeah. affect their enjoyment of either film, so. Mm -hmm. And for you, did, um, did you see it as, as a natural transition into yeah. the next chapter? Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it kind of takes like takes place like two years later. So it's, it's definitely a direct sequel. Most of the characters come from the first one come back, and they're, but they're the whole cast of new characters. Um, but at the same time, we never wanted it to be one of those things where you know you're going to be lost if you haven't seen the first one. Right. Well, get, why don't you give us a little synopsis of what the film's about? At the beginning of the movie, Go, the, the fictional Go, is at the height of his career, and he's just he's just sold one of his songs to a, a famous uh, antidepressant commercial and made a bunch of money off that, and he's got a new girlfriend, and life is good, but then all of a sudden his life falls apart right before he's supposed to go on tour when his girlfriend breaks up with him, and he kind of spins into a tailspin, and so the movie's about the first week after the breakup and all the crazy stuff that he, he does when he's kind of in this vortex. Right. And it turns into a, a road movie. Yep. And it's in black and white. Talk about that decision. Well, you know, the first one was in black and white. It didn't feel right to do it in color. I, I mean, I love black and white, and it felt like, um, you know, the, this kind of heightened reality of this world felt a little bit better to me in black and white. It was and you know, the producers of The Artist, they saw Surrey Valentine, <laughs> and they said, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, I mean the, f the first one we definitely took our, at least our visual cues from movies like A Hard Day's Night and Don't Look Back where it's very loose and we shot it in kind of a very 60s style, whereas this one, you know, we shot it in, we shot it in scope and it, it was kind of, I saw it more as like a 50s aesthetic, um, like Jailhouse Rock or something, it was much more composed, we didn't do as much kind of handheld documentary style stuff. It's not really dated. Somewhat generic, it could be any time. Yeah, yeah, to a certain extent. There's some moments where I thought, like, yeah, it could be like a 50s movie. Yeah, yeah except when the characters are talking to each other on Skype. But <laughs> other than that, yeah. <laughs> now, go, and we, I asked you the same question a year ago, so definitely deja vu. You're playing yourself, uh -huh. but you're not. Yeah. You are a character with the same name yeah. as you. So, how much of Go is in Go? Uh, 50% 50 me, 50% him, maybe. <laughs> Last year, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm definitely a different character in this movie than the first. I think, I think there's, there's probably, there's probably uh, more fiction in this one than there was in the first one. In the, the, in the first movie, his character was really just kind of a... He's just kind of there, kind of reacting to his surroundings, whereas this one, um, you know, we're really trying to sort of get inside the head of the fictional go and uh, take him into a darker place, so. The, the thing I love about, about your character is he's got this dry wit, and it, it's so subtle, and it, it, the way it comes across on screen requires a little bit of a focus on the part of the viewer, mm -hmm. and, and then, at some point, you're like, "Whoa, well, I, I get it. You know, this, this, I know this guy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Dave's like that too. He's very dry. So, yeah, I mean, part of the reason I, I wanted to make a movie with Go in the first place is just because, you know, we we have kind of a similar sensibility in a way. We're both we're both pretty laid back guys, and uh, we we're we're not like, you know, you're not gonna catch us being the life of the party. We're more like the guy 
guys sitting in the back of the room <laughs> making making uh, sarcastic comments and just joking around, kind of thinking that we are the people in the front. So. I, I kind of got that feeling, and, and I want to bring in, uh, mention Michael Lerman here, because I'm from Philly, mm -hmm. and I know Michael very well through the Philadelphia Film Festival, and he produced Sorry, Valentine, he's a producer on this, but he also has a writing credit. Yeah. I could, ma I s sort of imagine myself, or imagine myself, imagine you guys just sitting around a table, right, all throwing out ideas. What about this? What about that? Is, is that how it went? How did the writing process go? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the, the way it went. You, I don't think there was a single time when all four of us were sitting around a table, but, um, you know, we were making the movie with such a tight time frame that really required that many people working on it all the time just in order to get it done. And um, and so we would trade ideas via text or via Skype or you know, sometimes we'd get on on a Skype or on a phone conference call with all, all four of us and talk about how things were going. And then we just divided up the script and each took a, a piece of it and wrote it and stitched it all together and then from there tried to polish it so that it had more unity. Uh, go, did you have input along the way? Were there moments that you said, well, I think this would work better? Yeah, I did. Um, I, I kind of came in a little bit later, because they, they were doing their kind of like round table stuff, but they would, they would cue me in on stuff, or you know, if they were having trouble with something, they would you know, take a shot at the scene or something, so I would kind of type up a document and send it. Yeah, it, was, it was like a workforce for sure. I love the music. It's obviously key to the story, but it's not all your music. Yeah, uh, it's the lead uh, the, the, the girl, uh, Ye Ning, has right. this great band called Dream Day, who I've been a huge fan of, and uh, I've, I've been friends with her for a long time, too. So um, it's just nice to have her voice in there. Yeah, that's all nice. Yeah, as, as soon as I saw the, the opening credits, I saw it. The original music by Dream Day. I was like, Go has a big band. Because <laughs> I thought it would be all your music. That, I thought that was very well done yeah. and integrated into the story. Um, maybe talk about the technical issues of shooting black and white. I, I know there are probably viewers who would see that and think, oh, that's easy. You don't have to light it as much. You don't have to worry about you know, time of day and color timing, obviously. But, but it is not, it's not as easy as it looks. Is it? No, yeah, it's, you, your sense of composition really, uh, really has to change in a, in a lot of ways just because, um, you know, in color cinematography, you rely on colors to give the background and the character a separation. You know, if somebody, if somebody, for example, right here, if I was to shoot you against this wall, it'd be fine. But in black and white, you know, we've got a blue shirt against a, a sort of dark blue curtain in the back. That's not gonna, that's not gonna work. And the same thing when we were shooting a lot of um, exterior stuff out in San Juan Batista, it's really easy for people to get lost in backgrounds that in color would seem fine, but uh, and black and white seem really cluttered, 